Hello my painty friends, welcome back to Inspiration for Cards. My name is David and today we're going to make the next episode in our holiday series, a new Christmas card. And this time again I'm using the Tim Holtz, yeah I know it's, it's, it's a bit much, but I love this set, I love his collection that he brought out. And this one um, I really put on my vintage hat um, and made this card. I love the vintage feel of this Santa. I love the vintage feel of this card. I think it's really a pretty one. And uh, yeah, I, I am really happy with it. Now, if you really like this card as well, please consider to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. And while you're at it, give this video a like. Now, without any further ado, let's dive in, get all my stamps and all my inks out and make this beautiful card. Have fun. Right, now here we have all the products that I'm going to be using. It's a lot and this is going to be a bit longer video, but it's good for such a stunning card it's going to be. Um, I don't think that's going to matter. All these products I'm going to use and I will explain everything while we go along. So uh, let's dive in and make this card. As usual, I will link all these products down below in the description box and in full detail on my blog. So head over to my blog if you want to see all the details and um, uh, yeah, let's get a start and make this card. Right, so I went ahead and cut everything out uh, so that everything is ready to go. I changed my mind, I'm using the Gina K Master Layouts. One set, these are slightly bigger, plus um, they don't have the stitched edge, which for this card I like better. Now first, I'm going to be stamping Santa. I'm gonna put my vellum in there, take my embossing magic, the anti-static powder, because vellum is really, yeah, that will stick, that embossing powder. I will position Santa on there and pick him up. There we go. And I'm gonna emboss using frosted crystal. I really like this stuff, especially around Christmas time because uh, yeah, it's frosted. I'm going to be uh, stamping him in ground espresso. I don't want the hard black, but I do want a dark edge. I did a test for this piece and uh, I did it with red and I didn't like it so we're gonna go ahead and use ground espresso press it down and we're using the misty so if I miss a bit it doesn't matter stamp it down there we go now since it's on vellum the ink will beat up a bit and it will not dry very quickly but that's not a problem because we're gonna heat emboss it. Okay. I'm gonna take my ink chamois, clean up that stamp, put it to the side, take out center, and put the embossing powder on. Frosted crystal. And I'm really dumping it on there. I'm not gonna waste anything because everything will go back in to that pot. And there he is. Ready to be heat embossed. Now I'm gonna be using these tweezers to hold paper because it will become hot and I will heat up done all done and dusted and here we have Santa but we're not done with Santa, by all means. Because what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna take out my Distress Embossing Pen. I'm gonna use the brush. And I'm gonna color in, using my embossing pen, coloring in his mustache and his beard. Doesn't have to be perfect, 
at all. Just go over it, fill it in. I like these embossing pens from Ranger because it allows me to, to go over specific pieces to emboss. And as it's nice and shiny, you can see the parts you've missed. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put Frosted Crystal also on his beard. I'm gonna take out my scrap piece of paper and dump that on him again. And it will also stick to the um, parts that I've already done. It's funny because this stuff sort of sticks to itself. So I'm gonna have a second layer on the rest as well. You see? Cool. And my heat embossing tool, and that's nice and hot from when we just used it. So here we go. Giving him this second layer really, uh, yeah, makes him pop out even more and frosting his beard and mustache gives it a nice effect. So, now with that done, I'm going to take glossy accents and I'm going to put on some red mica flakes. I've got these mica flakes from a local artist here in the Netherlands. She makes her own pigments and her own mica flakes. These are really pretty. And I'm gonna put that there on his hat. Take off a bit because I don't want it to be raised too much. I like glossy accents because it gives nice dimension. However, in this case, I don't want that to pop up too much. Take this red mica flakes and put them on his head. Nice and red detail. Now, next thing I want to do is take the crayons, the new pearl crayons, and I want to put some color them on my mat and the red. Put them on as well. And I'm going to take my watercolor, take this green. Mix it up, and put that over the frosted crystal to bring in some green on his, yeah, how do you call that? What's the word in English? The green foliage from Christmas, I don't know. Hulst, it's in Dutch. I don't know the English name, sorry. I will color this in as well. Frosted crystal on his beard as well. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lightly, very lightly, I'm gonna take this very nice pearl, new distress, um, the frosted juniper, that was the name. And I'm gonna lightly wash that over his beard, giving him a full wash of color there not too much but just to make his beard stand out a bit as well done santa is ready to go okay what i'm going to do next is to fussy cut around him now i'm not good at fussy cutting by all means <laughs> uh, the opposite actually but this is quite a simple image so I should be able to manage it and cut that out. There he is, our little Santa, all fussy cut it out. I'm going to put him to the side and I'll come back to him later on. I love him. He's so cute. Right. Next, we're going to start to work on the background. Now, I'm going to do a lot of stamping and a lot of different things on this background. And we're going to start with these two long strips. I'm going to put them on. I'm going to stamp these using P2000 
field paint. So I'm going to put it on. I'm going to use the archival. So it's. And I'm not going to be perfect about this. I'm just going to take it, start the stamping the top. There we go. And then I'm going to ink it up again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset it a bit. And that way we're going to get second generation stamp and clearer stamp. There we go. Done using my stencil. Now I'm going to use my shifter stencil and I want uh, three lines on there. And I'm going to use oxide inks for this because I want some kind of coverage. And I'm going to use candied apple and peel paint. And I'm going to start off with candied apple. And I'm using a brush I'm just going up and down. This is as far as I will go up because I don't want it to be completely filled with these lines. You will see what I mean in a minute, but yeah. Oops. It can fade out a bit. Now let me see if I'm happy. Yeah, that's fine. Next, I'm going to do the same, and I'm going to turn it around, and I want three lines again. So we're creating some kind of plate pattern on this side, and fading out. are good to go. And we're going to start all over again. But now we're going to shift. So I've this is the shifter stencil from Tim Holtz. So I'm going to shift to the left. Sorry, I was paying attention to what I was doing. But this time we're going to use Peel Paint. I'm going to start blending up. Start at the bottom again. And I want three lines again. So one, two, and three. There we go. Then we've got this nice pattern. Heavy on the corner, blending out. We go. Now I'm going to take this stamp, use my oxide uh, vintage photo, stamp up the 25th of December. I'm going to, oh, sorry, the special delivery. I'm going to put that. I'm going to make a mild impression. I like this text, so. I'm going to put that on there. Not that you can read it, but it's going to be partly covered anyway. Um, but it's just giving it a bit of structure. Now it is 25th of December. Putting that on, putting that right at the top. we go. The next thing I'm going to do is grunge it up a bit. So I'm going to take my vintage photo ink in this case and my uh, blending tool. I like the don't blending tools for the inks. Makes it blending a bit easier. And I'm just gonna go around to grunge it up and make it all look a bit softer. 
just going around the edge. Then I'm gonna take walnut stain and just very lightly darken up some of the edges and corners. I'm gonna take Santa here. So I know I need to cut off a bit. So I'm gonna take my long Tim Holtz cutters and just kind of cut the side off. Okay, now this is vellum and vellum is transparent. That's why we love to use vellum. But the downside of that is that you can also see adhesive through it. So I'm gonna take some glue and as you can see, you see some pieces that are covered up that you don't see through. So I'm going to add some adhesive dots, some glue dots. I can put some glue. I want that bit to be stuck fairly good. Gonna stick Santa down. Slide him up there. I think this Santa is so cute. Now what we need to do is stamp the sentiment. It's from this collection, uh, another part of this year's Christmas collection. I'm gonna have a holly jolly Christmas, a very thin uh, sentiment, but it fits there perfectly. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take out my Misty, because I'm definitely not gonna ruin this. Stick him in the corner, put him on there. And I'm gonna use ground espresso archival to stamp it. It's the same color I use for the center. Perfect. Yeah, I like that. Now I've got my brown card base card panel that is that I'm gonna put this on because I don't want to use black I think it's a bit too hard in this case because I don't have black anywhere on there that's why I didn't want to stamp in black as well I'm gonna put some glue on the back put this card on the base and it gives it a really nice subtle border now the next thing I'm gonna do is come in with some grit paste and snowfall. Take my pellet knife, gonna take a bit out. I'm just gonna put that at the bottom of this card. Or around the edge, rather. I really like this stuff. It dries clear, so you will see that in the end shot of this video. Tap, tap, tap. Less is more, they say. Well, not at Christmas. <laughs> but I just like the different textures uh, on this card. I think it's a lot of fun. And this will take on some of the colors uh, underneath, but it will just give it a bit of structure. And I will be back to when I put it on the card base and to show you the final results. Okay, this is now sort of dry to the touch. Um, it will dry more clear. You see here, it's already dried clear. Some of these pieces will stay white because I've put them on there, but it'll take a bit of time before it's really uh, transparent. But I will go ahead and glue this to its base card. been about 15 minutes now since I've finished putting on the snow. This is why I'm doing it with glue because it really gives me some wiggle time. And I don't, normally I would put uh, foam tape 
underneath but this card already has so much dimension with the different structures of the snow and the mica flakes and the um, frosted crystal um, so that yeah it, I feel it doesn't need to be lifted up any more than it already is uh, with all the structure so this is the final result so I really love how this card turned out I think it's a very vintage classic Christmas um, Santa he's just the star of the show um, and despite the background is really busy he still pops out if you like this card too and you don't want to miss any of my future videos please consider to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you will not miss any of the future Christmas there's more Christmas cards coming up uh, I will link uh, at the end of this video to my Christmas series or the holiday series and you will uh, find all the Christmas cards I made there. It's a lot of fun, so have a look there. And thank you for watching this one, and I will see you the next time. Thank you. Bye.